Hello kids, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this here channel. Hey, on ETCG1 we talk about stuff, usually automotive related, uh, but we do not do repair videos. So if you are looking for repair videos, please head over to Eric the Car Guy, Eric the Car Guy's channel, and uh, watch all the repair videos you would like over there. I'll put a link in the description to make things easy for you. Today's topic, vehicle modifications as seen by the automotive technician. Now this was actually something that ended up in the suggestion box over at uh, the forum at ericthecarguy.com, which we'll talk about later in the program. And I believe it was George LV1999 who posted this question. And he asked me, he's like, what is the technician's perspective of vehicle modifications? And that got me to thinking like, hey, that sounds like a great idea for an ETCG1 video. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it right now. As an automotive technician, I freaking hate modif modified vehicles. I really, really do. Uh, working at the dealership, it's really nice when you're working on the same car line and you get a chance to see you know, the same pattern failures, that kind of thing, rolling through the door. It makes things fairly simple, especially working on Hondas. Hondas, in my opinion, are some of the easiest vehicles that you'll ever work on. Thing is, when they come in and they've been lowered or they have a body kit or they've got a turbo or they've got a bunch of gauges or just a bunch of stuff that some DIY somebody has bolted onto it, it is not what you want to see. Oftentimes, particularly with the lowered cars, you can't even get them up on the, the vehicle lifts. You have to actually get a floor jack out to jack them up enough so they can get the lift up underneath so you can get those things off the ground. Not to mention the wheels and the special locks that go with the wheels. Bottom line, technician point of view, as far as modified vehicle goes, in my opinion, last thing you want to see roll through the door. And here's the other thing. It's not often that you find those aftermarket add-ons done successfully or even properly. And it's many times that if a vehicle coming in is, is coming in for some sort of problem, that the addition of those aftermarket parts has caused the problem. So then you're faced with the prospect of telling the owner that the parts that you spent all that money on and bolted onto your vehicle are actually the cause of the problem that you're having. Sorry to tell you that, pay me. That's the technician point of view. Now the automotive enthusiast in me, the thing that basically got me started into becoming an auto mechanic to begin with, that stuff is cool. It can be really cool. In fact, I am not one to talk, okay, as far as vehicles just being ruined by, by aftermarket parts and, and the attempts of modification. Uh, I've, I've driven around in cars that were painted kind of crazy for a while. I had a, one that I unfortunately don't have a picture of. It was a 79 Honda Accord that I painted big smiley faces on the hood and the doors and the roof. And I drove that thing around. Yes, I did. Proudly. Um, the other half, it was silver and it had little bits of Bondo where I had sanded off the rust and painted over with primer. Last thing you want to do is drive around with a car with primer because primer absorbs moisture. <laughs> So if you're trying to like seal off the rust, paint it. Don't just walk around priming it because it will rust through at an accelerated rate if you're driving along, particularly in Western New York where I was living at the time, uh, where there's plenty of salt on the roads to rot away an old Japanese car. Yeah, I didn't care uh, on that one. I also drove another one with a big Mr. Yuck painted on the hood. That was my Reliant that was featured in another ETCG1 video that uh, I can post a link to for you. Uh, and an 84 Civic that was painted to look like an Argentinian Pac-Man frog, yes. So, I am not one to talk about vehicle modifications because I have done plenty of vehicle modifications, some successful, some not successful, but I've never gotten into the whole lowering thing. I didn't like the fact that I couldn't pull into the gas station or pull in anywhere and scrape up all that bodywork that I had. I didn't see the point of that at all. I like, I like vehicles that are lowered, but I would say an inch and a half is a good number. Any farther than that, you know, those two inch drops and just basically slammed on their nuts kind of cars, man, it's, it's, it's like driving a shopping cart. I don't know if you've driven these. I don't know if this excites you in some way that you like driving cars that, that just handle and ride like crap. I, more power to you, but that is not me. That's not where I wanted to go. Yes, have lowered cars. I've, I've done those kinds of things, but you know, not, not necessarily for myself, but for other people. And there's very seldom that I find that I'm pleased with the result. Part of that is a result of the 
cheap ass parts that are out there in the aftermarket that they're selling you to, to use to modify your vehicles. Some of those things are just flat out garbage. So you're getting rid of the, you know, decent stock stuff and putting on garbage aftermarket stuff, thinking you're making it better and it's, and it's just not. But I, I will say, I will say these modifications worked out really well. Steel braided brake lines and, and, re, and replacement of the rubber hoses on your brake system, probably the best dang upgrade you can ever do. So if, if you want to upgrade your braking system, don't do a drum to disc swap. I mean, it makes, the only thing that really does, I, I don't really see an increased stopping distance or a decreased stopping distance by going from drum to disc. About the only real benefit that I think you get is just a cleaner looking wheel. <laughs> you don't see those junky drums. Drum brakes last a long time. Rear brakes don't do a lot of the braking. So it's not like you're gonna see a whole lot of gain there. In fact, I've seen more problems often with disc, rear disc brake setups than I have with drum brakes. Drum brakes are a pain in the butt to change and everything, but for the most part, they don't cause a whole lot of problems and they last a long time. I understand your, your willingness to, or, or your desire to, to change that and make cool disc brakes for the rear, but I say save your money. I say go for steel braided lines, throw those on there and see how well your car stops. You know, like a rock hard pedal, it's just awesome. Steel braided brake lines, love that modification. As far as engine modifications, you know, modern engines are engineered just with an inch of layer of the lives. And, and they, they are made as a balance between performance and fuel economy. Engineers have done a ton of work crunching the numbers to try to strike the best possible balance between those two things. You get into it, you decide it doesn't perform enough, and you want to skew that a little bit more towards the performance side of things. I understand, I get it. Thing is, because of all that engineering and because of such a focused approach to creating those modern engines, there's not a whole lot of room for improvement unless you make drastic improvements. So I, I guess what I'm saying is, is back in the day, if you will, when I was a younger lad and had my first car and wanted to modify it, it was a 72 Ford Galaxy with a 351 Windsor. Okay, that you can modify. That you can take from a two barrel carburetor to a four barrel carburetor. You get more performance. Put a different cam in it, you get more performance. Put different rockers in it, put roller, ro roller lifters in it. You know, bore it out, put bigger pistons in, you know. Do, do stuff like that and you walk away with a better performing engine. Yeah, I just went through and spent a bunch of money there, but, but the room to modify those, that engine is there. In fact, the manufacturer even has it set up that way to where they sell different trim levels of the same vehicle. One vehicle has a two barrel carburetor, one vehicle has a four barrel carburetor, and it, and it changes the performance characteristics of that vehicle, just that simply. Different intake, different carburetor, poof, you got more performance. Today's vehicles, they don't have that room. They're not necessarily designed that way. So when you go and bolt on these other parts, you usually screw up something else down the road. And here's the other thing. You put all your money and time into that engine, but then your transmission's not up to the task. So then your transmission might start to break or your axles or other parts of the vehicle. It's, it's much more difficult to modify a vehicle now like in increments. It's mostly a question of, you know, like order up an engine from Spoon or something, dump it in and away you go. And, and that might be a better option than trying to build things. And we've, we've talked about rebuild or replace in the past and how much more expensive it is to rebuild something than it is to replace it. I can tell you, the people that build those engines and things like that are experts. They have the right tools, they have the right experience, they have the right know-how, they're way better than you. Not that you can't do it, not that it's not gonna be fun for you, but at the end of the day, if you're like, oh, I don't have any money, I don't have any money, spend it wisely. Don't throw good money over bad on stuff. I mean, be, be smart about your modifications. I, you do some research, look on forums, find out if these parts worked out for this you know, particular vehicle that you have. If they didn't work out, look for the ones that did. And, and that's the thing, I mean, you have, this is what you have that I didn't have. You have the tremendous resource of the internet and you're able to go out and, and find where the problem areas are or where the problem parts are. You, you can find communities that, that have done this type of thing to help you and give you the information. And that, that is extremely helpful because if you can learn from your own mistakes, great. But if you can learn from somebody else's mistakes, it's even better. <laughs> In fact, that's why I often leave the mistakes in my own videos, just to give you that option so that you can see, well, hey, you know, even Eric the car guy screws up once in a while. Yeah, I do. I do. But 
I try to share that with you so that you can walk away with that knowledge. Like, Eric the Car Guy did that and failed. I'm not gonna do the same thing. That's what I'm looking for, that, that's my hope. So even if I screw it up, it doesn't matter. You still walk away with useful information. Same thing goes with engine modifications or vehicle modifications. You, if, if you can learn from the mistakes of other people, you're ahead of the game. The other question that was posted there, and I can't, I can't remember who posted it, and I apologize for that, but you know what, I'll post a link in the description to this thread just so that you can see where it all comes from. The, the other question that came up was from somebody over across the pond in England. And they had, had asked if you do those modifications, if it, it affects your insurance or infects the... I believe it was the question is, does it affect your insurance? And also, does it affect your ability to register that vehicle, I think would also be a good, good thing to throw in there as well. Here in the States, no, not so much. Some states are more strict about it than others. I believe California is pretty strict about some things. Uh, but many states are really lax. I know Ohio is really lax. So if you do those modifications, uh, insurance company is more concerned about numbers than anything else. So they're looking at your driving habits and all that other kind of thing. Um, you're not going to get. And, and here's, he, here's something we've talked about before also. You do these modifications, you're, you know, pretty cool paint job, body kit, lower it, all that kind of stuff to your car. You think it's absolutely wonderful and great. It's awesome for you. Go to try and sell that car, you'll never see that money back. Never. So when you do these modifications, know that you're doing them for you. Be proud of the fact that you're doing them for you. But don't think you're actually going to walk away with the same amount of money that you got into that vehicle. Because it's not likely going to happen. And you're probably going to have a more difficult time selling it on the open market. Now, if you've got friends that are doing the same thing that you're doing, and you're trading cars and all that kind of stuff, fine. More power to you. But not everybody has that luxury. Most of us are just out there on our own, just wannabes, and just trying to get by. And if that's the case, then know that you are devaluing that vehicle by modifying it. There's just plain and simple. I don't, I don't care what you say in the comments about how it worked out for you in this one particular point in time, whatever. When you do these types of things, you devalue the vehicle. You, you change it from stock and you change it from what is a sellable commodity to something that is a niche market. And when you're in a niche market, that's what it is. You narrow the market. You, when you try to sell something, you want as broad a market as possible. That way you can sell it. But if you modify it, you're just narrowing that market further and further down to where there's only a particular type of person that's just like you and you're unique like a snowflake that hopefully will look at that car and fall in love with it just like you did. Good luck. As far as the legalities of these modifications causing issue during registration or with insurance, as far as the states go, there are certain states where it is a problem, other states where it's not a problem. I'm not exactly familiar with the laws in each and every state. You'll have to look that up for your locale to find out what that's all about. As far as other countries, you've got no clue. But apparently in England, it could be an issue if you go to modify your vehicle. If you do those modifications, it may affect your MOT, I believe is what it's called. Uh, whether or not you're even able to register it and if you're not able to register it then there's issues with insurance and everything else not really sure so if you are going to modify make sure you can modify make sure you can do the modifications that you're looking to do before you get started because as i said in the hid headlight video you don't want to get yourself in a position to where you know you spend all this money spend all this time and effort putting these modifications on your vehicle only to find it's not legal and you have to take it all off and go back to what you had before and it's a big waste of time and effort and money. Sad, but it happens, happens every single day. But here I am, ATCG1, trying to help you out, trying to have these discussions rolling. In fact, there will be a link in the description to a discussion about this very video that you can participate in. And while we're on the subject, hey, if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. And guess what? As soon as you land on that homepage, there's a whole list of different automotive issues that you may run into. And if you are running into one of those automotive issues, all you have to do is click on that topic. And I've written articles that include many of the videos that I've made that pertain to those things, like engine performance, electrical, transmissions, all kinds of things that I've, I've just tried to compile that information. So all you have to do is go to ericthecarguy.com, poof, you get answers. Well, hey, you know, if that is not enough for you, Sign up for a form, it's absolutely free. All you need is an email address. Just be sure to respond to the confirmation email that should end up in your inbox. If that's not the case, 
look for it. Look for it in your spam folder, bulk folder, whatever, because you will need to click that activation link in order to get onto the site. Once you've done that, feel free to post your question over to Service and Repair, and we will be happy to try and help you. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. And I will see you next time. And hey, have fun modifying your cars. Why? Because it is fun. See ya.